This is ARRL Audio News, your weekly summary of news highlights from the world of amateur radio. If you retransmit audio news through a repeater, listen for the Morse code K character, followed by four seconds of silence. That's your cue to stop transmitting so that your repeater timer can reset. Hey, how you doing? I'm Rick Lindquist, WW1ME, and this is ARRL Audio News for Friday, August 27th, 2021. Okay, and uh, is this information you're going to give me, is this measured or estimated? Over? Weather tops the agenda. More storms are on the way. This past week and weekend, Grace and Henri kept amateur radio weather spotters busy. The Hurricane Watch Net, which tracked both storms to gather weather data for the National Hurricane Center, was able to secure operations on August 22nd after Grace made two landfalls in Mexico. Now, Tropical Storm Ida looms on the Caribbean horizon. HWN manager Bobby Graves, KB5HAV, put it succinctly, things got busy and fast, he said. Henri came ashore as a tropical storm. Now, typically the net doesn't fire up for tropical storms, but made an exception in this case since Henri was just shy of hurricane strength and headed into a densely populated region. Rainfall generated by Henri, some of it record-breaking, caused heavy flooding. So we definitely, definitely appreciate uh, your observations and your report, so uh, thank you for being there. Over. Eastern Massachusetts Airy Section Emergency Coordinator Rob Macedo, KD1CY, who manages the VOIP Hurricane Net, announced plans for the Commonwealth in advance of Henri's arrival. These included coordination with Aries and Skywarn teams. The Hurricane Watch Net racked up 27 hours on the air in four activations. Graves said the net did not lack reporting stations for Henri, which wasn't as bad as anticipated. On the other hand, Grace, which made landfall in the Mexican state of Veracruz as a Category 3 hurricane with sustained winds of 125 miles an hour, caused several fatalities. The Hurricane Watch Net, the VOIP Hurricane Net, and Skywarn got high praise from the National Hurricane Center, which called them a vital part of the WX4 NHC team and part of the elite group of hurricane hams who provide forecasters with ground truth storm info. The annual Huntsville Ham Fest was back August 21st and 22nd after taking last year off because of the pandemic. ARRL President Rick Roderick, K5UR, and CEO David Minster, NA2AA, headed up the crew at the ARRL booth. ARRL Marketing Manager Bob Inderbitz and NQ1R said crowds were big, but organizers allowed plenty of room for physical distancing. This is Frank, W4RH, Port Morgan Beach, Florida. Been coming to this ham fest since 1980. How many years is that? 40 years. So I'm having a great time in Huntsville, Alabama. I've been busy. I just graduated summa cum laude from Kettering University with a double major in engineering physics and mechanical engineering. Wow, oh my gosh. Um, it's been amazing, a lot of fun. Um, and just last month, I was at Yoda Camp. I got to lead a satellite workshop and help with an Ares context. We got to talk with an astronaut on the ISS. Awesome. Well, it's great to see you here at the Huntsville Ham Fest. Thank and, you. And what's the future hold for you? I am enjoying a little bit of time off, but I'm starting graduate classes, hoping to get a, a master's in acoustics at Penn State. Some highlights, ARRL author Glenn Popeil, KW5GP, presented a forum on the Arduino and various ham radio applications using this microprocessor prototyping platform. Other forums featured amateur radio on the International Space Station and an ARRL membership town hall. Volunteers from the North Alabama DX Club hosted a sold-out banquet Saturday night ARRL produced a YouTube video chronicling the convention, and you heard a little bit of it a few minutes ago. This is ARRL Audio News, heard in Muskegon, Michigan, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on the 146.94 repeater, courtesy of the Muskegon Area Amateur Radio Council. Time now for the AMSAT report. A lot of FT4 users are out there, and satellite ops are among them. FT4 users are using RS-44, 
CAS4A, CAS4B, and XW2A, B, C, D, and F. A set of frequencies for each satellite can be loaded into SAT PC32 so that you can have Doppler correction. It's pretty neat to transmit a digital signal to a satellite with about one watt or less and make a contact. The MSAT EA, that's Spain, Genesis L and Genesis N satellites may launch as early as September 2nd from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, so they could be up by the time you hear this. The satellites were designed and built by AMSAT EA in collaboration with university students. The Genesis satellites are CW and Amplitude Shift King, ASK, digital repeater satellites, VHF up, UHF down. The AMSAT report comes to us each week, courtesy of Bruce Page, KK5DO. In June, Gerald Gall, KE7GGV of Vancouver, Washington, announced the launch of his new net in the Portland, Oregon, Vancouver, Washington metro area for the visually impaired, blind, and disabled. The net runs on the fourth Sunday of each month at 8 p.m. Pacific time on the W7RA2440.4 repeater. Some publicity about Gall and the net in the Colombian newspaper boosted attendance, Gall said, and brought a request for help from the mother of a young autistic man who would like to get his ham ticket. Gall, who is visually impaired, said he's planning to help the man every step of the way, even becoming a mentor after the man gets his license. Gall said ARRL Western Washington Section Manager Monty Simpson, W7FF, was providing material and working to come up with a plan involving the 25-year-old's parents that would help get the man licensed. Earlier this year, Simpson appointed Gall as an Assistant Section Manager for Inclusivity, as a result of the newspaper article, Gall reports receiving more than 50 calls from amateur radio operators, as well as from people who are interested in ham radio. He also serves as public information officer for Region 4 Aries Races in western Washington. Registration is now open for the 39th AMSAT Space Symposium and Annual General Meeting, Friday through Sunday, October 29th through the 31st, at the Crown Plaza Air, adjacent to the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. General registration is $75. Student registration is $40. Registration for the Saturday Evening Symposium Banquet is an additional $55. Registration includes a digital copy of the 2021 AMSAT Symposium Proceedings and admission to the symposium presentations and exhibits. The AMSAT Board of Directors will meet Thursday and Friday, October 28th and 29th. AMSAT Space Symposium presentations will start at 1 p.m. Central Time on Friday and continue until 5 p.m. The AMSAT reception is set for 7 p.m. on Friday. AMSAT Space Symposium presentations will continue on Saturday, October 30th, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. with a one-hour lunch break. The AMSAT General Meeting begins at 3 p.m. on Saturday. The banquet is at 7. Email members at amsat.org to arrange registration. Presenters are invited to participate at the symposium and or submit a paper to the symposium proceedings. ARRL Audio News is heard in Washington, Michigan, Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. on the 44615 repeater, courtesy of the Southern Michigan Repeater Network. Some short announcements. After eight decades of providing emergency backup communication on a volunteer basis during storms and disasters, the Steel City Amateur Radio Club in Pennsylvania hosted a special event station, w 8 o sharing the news of their 80th anniversary. The Steel City ARC is an ARRL-affiliated club. John Desmond, EI7GL, reported on a transatlantic opening on 144 MHz between the Canary Islands and the Caribbean on August 20th, Distances in excess of 5,000 kilometers, that's about 3,100 miles, were achieved with EA8CXN contacting both Puerto Rico and Guadalupe. 
ARRL member Ryan Pearson, KN4VKW of Brentwood, Tennessee, took part in the Little League Baseball World Series in August in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Wearing number seven, he's a pitcher and a shortstop. Ryan, along with his brother Blake, KN4VKY, his dad Andrew, KN4VKX, and his ham radio mentor RJ, KC4LRR, all upgraded to amateur extra class last summer. The space weather woman, Tamitha Scove, WX6SWW, has some words on how things are going that could affect radio propagation here on Earth. For the solar particle, or the solar flare and particle radiation out, storm outlook, the M class, five uh, percent M class, ch or chance of M class flares is really from region 2860 now. It was from 2859 last week, but. 2859 looks like it's kind of calming down. So we're definitely just watching 2860 and we may have a new region rotate or, or emerging. Uh, and if so, that, that M-class flare risk may go up a little bit, but I doubt it. I think it'll probably stay around 5% probably for this entire week, as long as these regions are in Earth, uh, Earth view. Uh, meanwhile, the solar flux is climbing up. Uh, we've got it up to the 86, at least by the end of the week. That could go even higher, especially if these other regions begin to emerge even more. So um, I'm, you know, I'm going to pay attention to that. And also, I'm almost about to change the D2 minor range down to a D1. I've been watching the cosmic ray flux. It's really dropping. So that's a really good sign. So we may be, because as that cosmic ray flux drops, that really tells us the solar cycle 25 is taken off and the sun's magnetic field is really strengthening. That's space weather woman Tamitha Scove, WX6SWW, with an informal report. And that's ARRL Audio News for Friday, August 27, 2021. For details on these and other amateur radio news happenings, visit the ARRL website, www.arrl.org, or better yet, subscribe to the weekly ARRL letter via your ARRL website member profile. And let us know where you hear ARRL Audio News with an email to audio news, one word, at arrl.org. This past week, we heard from Dave, KK6DA in California, Andrew, KC1PGF in New Hampshire, and Robert, PE1MFU in the Netherlands, who listens via Spotify. For now, I'm Rick Lindquist, WW1ME73, and we'll see you next time, everybody. ARRL Audio News is produced by the American Radio Relay League, the National Association for Amateur Radio. For more information on amateur radio or the ARRL, visit us on the web at arrl.org. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter by searching for ARRL. If you have a question or comment about ARRL Audio News, email us at audionews at arrl.org. This program is copyright ARRL, all rights reserved. 73, and thanks for listening.